Thank you very much to all the attendees that we have uh, today. Um, uh, uh, our subject today is promoting enterprise architecture models, knowledge interchange, and business value using Archimate. And for that, we are going to have a, a group of uh, speakers, and, and uh, it, it's me. Uh, I'm Sonia Gonzalez from the Open Group. I'm the uh, Archimate Forum Director, and it's a pleasure for me to be here today to share this information with you. We are also having Phil Bivier from Archie, Harm Baker from Biz Design, Alan Brunet from Corso, who were part of the team that work in the standard, and also Andrew UFC, which is our Director of Standard for the Open Group. Uh, so all of us wanted to welcome you to this event. A little bit about the agenda for today. First, we're going to explain why we consider that having this Exchange 5 format is important for the community and for Archimate. Then a little bit about business value perspective. Why is this standard delivering value and who are the main stakeholders that will receive this value? Then we want to talk about a brief technical overview on the format and for that, the technical experts that are the, actually the ones that have worked in this standard development will deliver an explanation and that. It also, we will have uh, the, the current tools that are supporting the exchange file format that in this case are also Biz Design and Archie. Uh, so uh, the three uh, representatives will be uh, uh, sharing their experiences with us about this. Then we are going to have a demo about how the exchange uh, works in from the different, into the different tools, uh, future plans for the format and the actual state of the standard and some final conclusions. And at the end, we are having a, a, a questions and answer session. So first question, why it is important to have an exchange file format for the Archimate standard? And for that, it is important to go a little bit of background in here. Uh, first, before having this format, this uh, standard, Archimate models were creating in different tools uh, and in different formats, even though all of them were compatible and compliant with Archimate, they were made in different uh, formats and different uh, uh, languages, so that's why they were locked in just one tool and it was not easy to share all that comment and that content. The existence of different formats was an issue for consultants and vendors since their customers had difficulties sharing uh, information through the different models. And also in some cases, migrating from one tool to another, it was a real issue uh, for, for, for the end users if they have to redraw that again uh, with the lack of consistency on the information and also having to spend uh, more money, time and effort and having to do all the reviewing everything. Thing again. So that's why the relevance about having this standard, uh, because it preserves user investment in the development of the Archimate models, and on the other hand, it frees the model from being just locked in one tool, so now we can be sure that even though the different models are compliant with Archimate, now they can also be shared in a consistent way and, and between the different tools that are actually using the standard. And like we said at the beginning, it's saving money effort and also it's uh, delivering the confidence that the information that we are sharing is really being representative and being accurate. About the business value perspective, I think like the business value is not only for modelers or technical people because at the end what we do when we do enterprise architecture is to deliver a landscape of our organization in order to the leaders to take the final key decisions that are related with business and strategy. So one of the main advantages is that we are supporting interoperability and information exchange between organization, organizational areas, vendor, uh, different sectors, different vertical, et cetera, in a very consistent way, and making sure that they're being conformant with the standard. If we go into end users and decision makers, for example, the CIOs and other key stakeholders into organization, for them having the possibility of interchange model will allow them to have better information provided for strategic and business stakeholder decisions. So, for example, in, in, in this moment, we know that the pressures on the market are forcing us to have everything together. We have our businesses now surrendered by another ones, so we have 
have a whole value change in which we have to be interacting with our customers, with other business partners, uh, with alliances, uh, with another organizational bodies. So for this, it's really key to have the way to interchange these different architectural descriptions and being able to, to have a, a, a unified view about all this. For modelers, architects, and designers, they are also able now to interchange with colleges and uh, another related organization and share the knowledge. And that way we are also supporting having a real networking of information and a real in, in knowledge base of models, a real model repository that is now more global. And like, like we said also at the beginning, this uh, issue have a also operational advantage in the sense that that now we are able to migrate between different tools with the corresponding tape uh, and money savings. For vendors, now they share information with business partners and other alliances uh, easier so they can build this uh, value change for the final customer. And for example, if you have a large project in which there are three or four vendors involved, so it's not an issue anymore if uh, every vendor or every part of the team will deliver a specific part of the model because at the end, uh, all the information will go into a common repository. Uh, it's also easier for customers to migrate from one tool to the other and to also perform some benchmarking between tools and also to test for conformance. For consultants, they are actually working with final users and one of the key issues is to how to define and compose a repository in which they will have different models uh, mixed together. So this is also uh, being consultants work easier with, with end users and explaining them that even though they will have, for example, one tool and then use another one for another part of the organization, it's not, it shouldn't be an issue anymore because at the end everything will, be, will go into a single, a single repository. And this is also very good for trainers because it's a good way to explain and teach uh, about interoperability and cooperation and also to, to explain uh, their students how the different tools that are RMA certified are working together and collaborating in this new uh, interchange standard. The session now we're going to give the control to Phil that is going to deliver a brief technical overview about the format. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Um, and uh, hello to everyone who's listening in. Yeah, I'm Phil Beauvoir and I um, work on Archie, the open source Archimate um, tool. Um, and I've just been asked to represent the other people um, on the project who have worked at the technical level, bringing the Archimate Exchange format out. So yeah, we've been working for um, a little while together between um, various vendors and the open group to work on uh, the Archimate Exchange file format. As Sonia says, there's something that's really quite important to add value to end users and tool vendors and, and customers. Um, the design features that we decided on at the early stages were the bullet points that you see in the, in the slide here we decided that portability was an important issue for importing and exporting a model file. It should be software and hardware platform independent, and then there's completeness. So it should be possible to represent a model file accurately when moving between tools um, and to represent the concepts and relationships as defined in the Archimate 2.1 specification and any graphical representations, i.e. the diagrams. It should have robustness to errors, so it should be possible to detect errors at an early stage when importing and exporting between tools. And obviously there should be interchangeability so that any tool conforming to the standard will be capable of reading and writing all conforming model files. And flexibility, um, in that future extensions to the Archimate language and any possible vendor-specific additions should be accommodated for without compromising the robustness um, portability of the exchange of the standard model files. So the, the exchange file format should, at the very least, be able to convey from one tool to another the basic Archimate concepts, relationships, attributes, objects, and diagrammatic information. So 
we have all of the Archimate concepts, things like business actor, application concepts, and technology concepts. Those need to be exchanged, obviously, at uh, the semantic level. We need the relationships, the Archimate relationships between those objects. Those, that information needs to be exchanged as well as diagrammatic information. Now, some of these things are going to be more optional than others, and some things are going to be extremely mandatory in what we exchange. So we do need, at the very least, to exchange model information relating to the concepts, the relationships, and if we can get diagrams as well, which I'll come to in a minute, then we're on to a win-win situation. I must say what the for file format is not at this stage. The exchange file format is not intended as a native file format in the same way that you might find that XMI is used to represent UML. We are, are not using that kind of notation, that, that kind of representation for Archimate because there are too many problems around defining the Archimate specification there's a lot of there are a lot of loose ends there are a lot of fuzzy areas with Archimate and in order to use an, sorry in order to create a native file format for Archimate then we would have to for example look at things like XMI and MOF and, and all of that kind of stuff so we made the task for ourselves to concentrate on exchanging file format information between tools and the tools, therefore, have to be Archimate aware or, um, so that there's no implicit meta model in the exchange file. The, you, you, when you receive a file as a tool, you must know what those Archimate concepts are already. You must know what those Archimate relationships are in order to make sense of the file, the Archimate exchange file that you're receiving. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So going back to the requirements for the exchange file format, as I said, as I said earlier, it should be extensible to allow for possible um, vendor-specific things. Obviously, the language is going to change. There will obviously be future versions of Archimate. We need to keep that in mind. And we obviously need to contain enough information to exchange a model usefully. Between between tools and and diagrams. Next diagram. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So carrying on with the requirements, the the first requirement was started off with simple things like shall include an identifier for the version of the Archimate language supported. Okay. So this is, in our case is 2.1, and then once we've established that, we know that there are a finite number of con Archimate concepts and relations that we can exchange, and also shall include metadata about the instance of the model being exchanged, metadata being things like um, purpose of the author of the Archimate model, those kind of things. And a model without additional textual value is not much use. So we need to support exchange of documentation, and documentation applies to the model itself and also to the aggregate parts of, of the concepts and relationship. And also to support optionally localization, because not everyone's speaking one language. So when we see uh, diagrams with labels and documentations and properties and attributes, those need to be in more than one uh, lang international language, so we, we decided that we needed to support that as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so we, we've established that we're not going to come up with an XMI type of definitive representation of an Archimate model because of various problems inherent in that. So we're, we're actually conveying information from A to B. We're packaging the model information to get it out from one tool to another tool or from that tool to yet another tool. And so the easiest way to do this is to express the model, or represent the model rather, in XML um, backed by an, a schema, or an XSD schema, to validate 
the well-formedness of of the XML. So there's no representation of a meta model of an Archimate meta model per se in the XML, other than one that's implicit in the structure of the XML document. So we chose XML after trying a few other things. One thing that we did try was OWL, which is the um, which is the web ontology language um, that proved somewhat problematic in representing things like diagrams and uh, colors and that. And also um, some of us were finding problems in actually implementing it in our tools uh, with the availability of OWL libraries. So we went with XML and it was something that we could work with quickly um, and it's well documented, it's, it, you know, there are many, plugins and tools available for vendors to use, and it's proven for other exchange and interoperability file formats and allows quicker progress all around. And you can in incorporate other XML standards, such as Dublin Core Metadata, something that you could add onto your model to d use it to describe it so that you could um, add additional information about the model so that if you had models in a repository, you might search on tags or authors or rights, that kind of stuff. Next slide, please. Okay, so this this is a, what we're looking at here is actually, I suppose it's a kind of UML model of the, of the, uh, of the implementation that we put in place. Um, you can see that we've got um, the white box at the top, which is the Archimate model. Obviously, that is the container for other things like metadata, for elements, relationships, properties, and attributes. That's another thing that we um, wanted to include in the in the file format, so that you can add things like cost, other metrics, other other uh, attributes in Archimate language or properties to all of the concepts. These are additional things that we can add to the XML. Thank you, Phil. All right, this is Andrew Joseph here from the Open Group. Um, just to give you a little bit of an update on where we are with where you can get hold of the standard. Um, the standard was approved by the Open Group in July and published in August. You can download it from the URL shown here. Um, you will need to register for a, an Open Group Web ID if you haven't already got one. Um, as well as the standard itself, there are a number of supporting items such as schema documentation and a number of example models. There's, always, there's also a, an online resource site, which we're seeing here. So you can go to www.opengroup.org slash xsd slash Archimate, and that, as well as containing links to the standard, that contains a link to an implementer's guide and the FAQ. So we've actually put together a guide to actually help other, um, other tools suppliers who might be thinking of implementing the format to explain some of the um, sort of best ways to do that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the other thing the Open Group's also doing, has now started doing, is adding models to its publications where applicable. So here you will see for this white paper, which is about um, the TOGAF framework uh, with the Archimate, using the TOGAF framework with the Archimate modeling language, we have some Archimate examples within the white paper. So now we actually also publish the, um, the XML uh, Archimate model exchange file with that. And there's a couple of different uh, models and case studies that we've published using that. So you can download the Archisurance and the, um, and the Archimetal case study. Um, lastly, we're actually starting to see that um, there are other uses of the XML format, and here's an example that was uh, contributed to us by um, by Diffie in Norway, and they've actually been using um, uh, they've actually been uh, able to generate uh, information about models using an XSLT style sheet. So this is actually something that's very simple to do. So we're actually starting to see these spin-off ideas um, about how you can use the exchange file format. I think we've also seen another paper written by uh, a Dutch company about how they're importing uh, the XML models into a database and being able to do searches about relations and so on. So it's a very flexible format and it's very easy to understand and use. Okay, back to Sonia at this point.
Okay, thank you, Andrew. Now uh, that we have uh, delivered an overview about the standard and about the advantage of using the standard and have the different resources that we can have in the Open Group page, we are going to also go uh, about the current tools that are supported the exchange file format. And for that, and we are going to ask uh, the three uh, representatives of the companies to talk a little bit about their experiences uh, while delivering this uh, the standard format. Okay, Sonia, thank you. Um, my name is Arm Bakker from Biz Design. Uh, together with my colleague Franz Faze, um, uh, we worked on defining uh, the ArcMate Exchange file format. Um, uh, and we have implemented it in Biz Design Architect uh, in release 4.7, which was uh, uh, released this summer, summer 2015. And we have implemented uh, it using our Biz Design scripting language, uh, which makes it easy to extend later on should new versions of the ArcMate language appear, for example, uh, that can be catered for quite easily uh, by extending export and import script. So there are two scripts, one for importing models and one for exporting models. Um, and the benefit of using the exchange file format is, of course, that our users can rely on one well-defined format for importing and exporting models. Uh, irrespective of which tool they come from. Um, and of course, as, as one of the leading parties in defining the Open Group's Archimate uh, standard, we adhere to the open exchange of uh, architecture models between tools. Um, and as a plus for us as a tool vendor, uh, it's also good that we don't have to write that many import scripts for each tool we know of, so we can simply rely on uh, that other tool vendors also implement implement uh, the, the same uh, exchange format. Um, and as a plus, also Busy Young Architect supports uh, multiple modeling languages, such as English, Dutch, French, and, and German, and Spanish. Uh, and these can also be exchanged using uh, the exchange format. OK, back to you, or back to Alan. Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 hi, yeah, hi, everybody. My name's uh, Alan Burnett from Corso. Um, just briefly about us, uh, we provide tooling, hosting, and services to support EA and, and more specifically, Archimate. Uh, about four years ago, we built a plugin to, to System Architect to support Archimate, and actually, we've now got a, a digital web, web platform that does that as well. Um, back in the summer, we uh, implemented uh, the exchange mechanism to that plugin. Uh, you can access that by a, a simple menu item for both export and import, and you can also choose uh, which elements you want to bring in or export at that point as well. I mean, for us, the key driver was to, to, to enable the exchange of models has been, as has been described in this presentation, because we do recognize that you know, when we're on site or in engagements, there could be multiple tools and partners involved. So if the tool of choice is Corso or there are multiple tools on site, then we can focus more on business outcomes rather than get hung up on tool integration. So we're very happy to support this uh, uh, this, uh, this exchange program. Um, and if you want to know any more about us, then obviously you can contact us. Thanks. I think it's still now. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, so as far as Archie's concerned, um, Archie's built on a pluggable framework, the Eclipse framework. So um, it was relatively easy to implement the exchange format within Archie to um, import uh, model representations in XML um, using a JDOM plugin and some handcrafted code. Um, so Archie 3.3, which is the current version of Archie, supports uh, the uh, Open Group's Archimate Exchange file format. If you download Archie, it's it's there in the file menu. You can you can work with the model. You can select the uh, export to the Open Group Exchange format option to export uh, a model in the XML file format, or you can import one as well um, under the hood. Uh, there's some validation going on against the schema, so um, Archie will validate uh, any XML instance against the XSD schema. And tell you if there's something wrong with uh, which there isn't something wrong with it be, with between the tools that we've been testing, but should a tool uh, incorrectly implement the exchange format and and create a um, an error 
an erroneous um, exchange file format, then Archie will will um, shout at you and tell you that there's something wrong and go back to the person to fix it. So yeah, it's uh, it's all there um, in Archie. Um, it's a plugin, and it, it's um, it was um, thanks to the Open Group they sponsored the development of the Archie plugin for, for and my work on the exchange format. For it. So a uh, big shout out to them. Thank you for that. Um, and that's what we've done. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you, Arm. So we are going a little bit about the demo of the model exchange, and, and for that we have a set of slides in which, uh, again, the different vendors will go over the different steps and will deliver an explanation about how the interchange works uh, in real time with the tools. Yeah, so um, this is the, the file as it is uh, being exported from, from BizDesign Architect. In this case, we started with BizDesign Architect doing uh, the, the first export. Um, and what you see here, after you have run the script from, from within uh, BizDesign Architect, you see here the results, the XML result. Um, what you can't see is that all, all of the method, all of the objects and relations and the graphical information is within the XML file. And uh, what you see on this screen is also that, that international information, uh, the languages we, we support, like English, Dutch, French, etc., are also being exported in this, uh, in this XML uh, format. Um, and um, we have run uh, the demo by means of a, a set of slides that show you how the export that started from Design Architect um, shown on this screen. Um, when you want to export uh, a file, you just select the model in the model browser on the left-hand side of the screen, and then you would run the export script, which is quite easy. Um, and in this view, you see uh, some details that, uh, that we changed in this model. So we made uh, one object a red color, one object with some thick lines, uh, and one object with some grayed out text. Uh, and these are all there to illustrate that all this kind of graphical information also gets uh, exported and uh, imported in the tools, in the other tools. Um, so let's continue to the following tool. Yeah, okay, thanks, Harm. Um, so as Harm said, yeah, he, in Biz Design Architect, you can export the model to the exchange format, which uh, Harm and Franz did. And then I took that XML file and imported it straight away into Archie. And looking at it, I think it looks pretty much the same as what we were seeing in, in Biz Design Architect, um, except for a few things, which I should point out. Not every tool implements every graphical feature. So I think there's a thick line missing, maybe because one tool does not implement line thicknesses. Or another tool might not implement things like uh, alpha shade or shading, that, that kind of thing. One thing I had to do when I imported it was I had to make some slight adjustments to the connections. And this is because Archie implements connections different to how Biz Design Architect implements it. So it's something to be aware of that there is going there, when it comes to diagrams, there is going to be um, a loss. So there could possibly be a loss, I should say, somewhere along the line, simply because of the way that the tool might implement its graphical representation. Okay, so now I hand over to Corsa. Yeah, hi, so we, so we did a similar exercise here where we took uh, the model from BizDesign. Um, and so from, the, from an importer perspective, we can, we can select an import file. It's very simple. Uh, we actually can choose all or part of that model that we wish to be imported, so we don't have to take everything. Um, so that's, that's one advantage. We, in terms of the views, they're mapped to the relevant diagram in the tool, and all the objects are, are mapped to their relevant definitions with, the, with their associations. Um, and what we see here graphically is that we've managed to maintain uh, the colors, uh, the, the bolding, and the, um, the, the, the lighter text. So uh, we've replicated most of this. Uh, as Phil said earlier, um, you do have to 
yeah, get around the fact that different tools handle, handle different things in different ways. So some of the line routing will be uh, from system architect because we can manage the bend points, um, but actually you know, the start and end points do depend on the tools they come from. Um, and so we've just made an adjustment for that. But as you can see here, it's, it's pretty much a replication of that. Uh, I think I've also got the next slide as well. Slide. So this is the next slide. So now we've come through uh, the process of into business, uh, out of business design, into, uh, into Archie, and then into system architect. So uh, pretty much um, held on to all the information again. You'll see that the bolding of, the, of one of the boxes has not been brought through. So I guess that's the hop that we saw through through one earlier. And we uh, we can see some of the um, indirect relationships we have them as, as red lines in the tool, so that's maintained. So there's, there's a, maybe there's a little bit of time to do that, but, but effectively we've got, uh, got the same structure. Um, so all, the, all of the uh, model information is maintained. There might be some symbol, you know, some slight differences in the symbol here, but pretty, pretty close, as you can see. Okay, um, back to Archie. And so what we're seeing <laughs> is um, a bit like Chinese whispers. We're seeing the BIS design import from Corso imported um, back into. Um, no, is this, this? I'm looking at the wrong one. Um, uh, let me take this, Phil. Um, yeah. Sorry. You see what happened? It looks <laughs> it's so just close. Chinese whispers here. Yeah, it looks so close to Archie. I thought it was Archie. You see, and this is the success of the exchange format. Um, yeah, this is a good example. What we see here is um, uh, the Corso import uh, of Architect and uh, of Archie and re-imported into Biz Design Architect again. Uh, and what you see here is uh, uh, some some things to note. Of course, is that uh, the graphical information is not uh, uh, imported uh, all as such. Um, you see the grayed out text and the red symbol. That's okay, but the attachment points of the lines. Uh, they are not well uh, transferred now, uh, so you need some post-processing to make this model look like it did when it was exported. Uh, and another missing thing here is, is that the labels, the names on the relation lines, uh, they are uh, missing as well here. So uh, uh, that's just an illustration of the point that not all of the graphical information uh, gets transferred, but most of it is transferred quite good. So on to you, Phil. Sorry about that. Sorry about that harm. I, <laughs> I genuinely thought that was uh, Archie there for a moment. There. I put my glasses back on now, and, and yes, back to Archie. So resuming our program, um, this is um, imported from Corso, who had previously imported from Biz Design. Um, okay, lost a little bit there. Lost some, as Harm said, lost some of the labels on the um, on the connections. So, um, but fundamentally, what we have exchanged, we always exchange the, the semantic elements, the models, the model itself, the elements, and the relationships. Of course, something to remember, this is version 1.0, and there are some improvements we could possibly make, and this is probably something that could be looked at in future versions. But uh, as you can see, between the, the three tools, between uh, Biz Design Architect, between Corso's tool, and between the Archie tool, we're getting you know a very good 95% um, uh, integrity of exchange here. Yeah. I just want to talk a little bit about our future plans. So uh, a couple of areas we're looking at as we move towards the future. Uh, firstly, we're looking at uh, mandating the su support for the exchange file format as part of the certification program. So what that would mean would be that all Archimate certified tools would be required to support the format. So that's uh, we're looking at uh, when we can bring that in. Obviously, there'll be some testing that we want to introduce to, uh, to assure that. Uh, we're also investigating exchange of incremental updates for a model. So that's instead of a uh, instead of importing a whole model, it might be that just changes that you could send changes across to another tool. Obviously, that's uh, slightly more complicated and um, something we'll have to think about. We'll obviously be also supporting future versions of the Archimate standard as they arise. And the other thing is we're looking to have more more tools suppliers supporting the standard. So 
So those are our sort of future plans that we're currently thinking of. So back to Sonia at this point for the wrap up. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew, and thank you also uh, our three vendor representative for the the demo. And making a little bit uh, wrapping up, just we can go to questions and answers. Uh, as we know, uh, right now we have to face a lot of competitive markets that are demanding for their real and truly boundaryless information flow between organizations. So in this sense, information interchange becomes a key issue for different organizations, no matter in which sector or vertical they are. And also related with that, we have now architectural descriptions that can deliver and should deliver organizations overview and value uh, and improve decision making and both for that it's important to deliver a holistic uh, assessment on that and and we, we can only accomplish that if we integrate all these different models through the whole value change in this context and we see that the EA model interchange become critical to deliver this uh, integrated view through different organizations differing uh, vertical sectors and different types of organizations and between different tools and for that uh, the Archimate exchange file format uh, it's uh, delivering this it's supporting this and it's a very it's a uh, efficient and um, a good way and precise way to make the interchange like we we could observe in the demo uh, practically the model was looking exactly the same with a few differences between the different tools, which is uh, uh, saving a lot of money and efforts uh, between different organizations and vendors. Uh, also, we know that the industry as a whole uh, can obtain a huge benefits through the application of this uh, Archimate uh, model change file format, because now knowledge can be shared, uh, vendors can work better together, can cooperate, and can improve their offers to the market, and also pursue better alliances, and deliver better services to the final users or end users that can, can actually start sharing information information in a more efficient way. We also know that EA is a growing discipline and then standards like Archimate can support it better if we now have vendors and implementers and consultants that can talk to each other in a more uh, consistent and easier way and, and we can facilitate, for example, like uh, we saw in the demo, a model being uh, migrated from business design and then to Corso and then and then to Archie in a continuously way and, and keeping the key information and also keeping all the conformance with the standard, which is delivering a lot of value to the industry as a whole. And finally, we know that uh, we as Open Group, we support uh, open standards that will deliver value to the community. And for that, the Archimate Exchange File Format, which is an Open Group standard, is supporting all these key issues and it's also promoting a better networking among the different communities and, uh, and users vendor, consultants, and trainers. So that's uh, the wrapping up that we are making uh, about uh, the standard. And we really hope that this content has been valuable. And now we have come to the to the point of some questions and answers, like Simon explaining at the beginning, uh, the process was to write down your questions uh, in the chat dialogue, and then we will ask Simon again uh, to start reading some of those questions, and uh, we will try to deliver the proper answers as a group. That's great, Sonia, and uh, thank you, panel, for that uh, presentation explanation. Uh, yes, we do have a few questions in. First of all, a question from Hans. He's asking, does ARIS also support the exchange file format? Uh, like this is Andrew. I'll take that one if you want. I think the answer is we don't know at this time. The only tools that we are aware of are the three that um, have been involved from the start. Obviously, we've got the information out there to help implementers, and we're more than happy to work with uh, other tools, suppliers, to get them uh, to support the format and then we'd invite them to come and participate with us in doing, we have a sort of an interoperability testing area that um, that we have between the, the various tool suppliers where we do this exchange of models. So, um, so that's, that's where we are right now. That's great, Andrew, thank you for that. A question from Rafi asking, uh, how about security in model exchange? I think you did touch on this, but would, would anyone like just to clarify a little bit more about the security? Who would like to take the question on the sec about security in models exchange? Well, I'm not an expert on it, uh, but the thing that occurs to me when thinking of that question is depends on the context. Um, I come from an open source background, so for me, it's not an issue. People want to share models to learn. 
but in-house, I suppose it depends what you're doing. Um, I think it may be an issue for the end user. Um, an end user might work with more than one tool, and an end user might, in one scenario, simply want to, let's take the scenario of getting a model out from Archie and into Corso's system architect, for example. Um, I don't know whether security lies in that. I mean, I suppose it's like anything else the, 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 in the issue of sharing data um, around security issues. Okay, thank you, Phil. Uh, question here from Jerome. Uh, I'll read. He's asking, um, could we start somewhere, or, or is somewhere already available? And he's saying some site where an Archimate template uh, or Archimate templates are stored. But he also says also ERP uh, delivered business models are stored. Um, are, are there such templates? And if so, are they available or freely available at the moment? I guess I think I would take that, and perhaps uh, the rest of the Families can also help me out. I think at the, in terms of Archimate templates, we have a, uh, if you go into the open group uh, site, you will uh, go into publication, and you will see several uh, Archimate and talk of publication, and some of them are actually uh, case studies and ways to start using Archimate. If we are uh, talking uh, specifically about the, about the standard itself, uh, in terms of starting using the tools, we also have uh, uh, the register of the the different tools provider that are, are actually Archimate certified. So you can also find the, the information to reach the different vendors and, and ask if you are looking for a specific implementation uh, on the standard. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Um, just picking up on the security issue, we have a, a, another supplementary question uh, asking, are, are these exchange formats password protected? Phil? <laughs> Yeah, I was just waiting in case anyone else wanted to answer that. A uh, very simple answer to that. No. Um, there's no, there isn't any, any um, password protection or encryption in the exchange format. It's just an open XML format. Um, it makes me think, though, about, I mean, if you're using one of the tools in-house in, 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 in your organization, are they do they support uh, password protection already um i'm not sure um i suppose it comes back to that issue of um securing data internally and in house yeah i think i'm sorry just as salon here just to just to add to that i mean i do get involved in quite a, a lot of security issues especially dealing on the cloud i think if you just if you have the internal processes that allow you to or to make sure that anything you handle is if you're handling customer data or handling internal data with, with passwords and protection, then I think it's more about the, the processes you put around it as opposed to something inherent in the, in the interchange exchange. And if you're on the cloud, you obviously have to be more careful about how you handle um, how you handle data. So for me, it's more of an internal process, I think. Okay, thank you, Alan. A uh, question here from Enrique uh, asking, uh, does the Archie version for Mac um, support integration with Corso and Biz Design? Well, um, in, if you mean by integration, does it support the Exchange format? Then yes, the um, Archie version for Mac has exactly the same features as the Archie version for Windows and Linux. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, moving on a bit, uh, also the, the version of Vision Architect that can run on the Mac can run in, in parallels, or uh, it doesn't run native on Mac, but. Uh, when running so, it of course will support the exchange of data from either Archie or uh, from Corso. So. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, question from Sandy: uh, How is this different or better from EDI Data Model Exchange? Uh, may, maybe to, to add a bit uh, on this, uh, EDI Model Exchange will, uh, as, I, as I can recall. Uh, just exchange the, the, the semantic part, like the, the objects and the relations, but not necessarily the graphical information, which is uh, quite a big plus of this exchange format, I think, because the graphical models, the views that you make are really uh, quite some work, and it's good that you can exchange them in an open way between the tools. Okay, thank you. Uh, got a question here from Zolt, but it looks like it may have already been answered within the Q&A, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask it anyway to the panel. And Zolt's asking, do you plan to work with Mega and do it to create an industry standard for EA exchange format, 
or have you already done this? Sonia? Okay, like Andrew just explaining, we are open to have more vendors participation. And actually, Mega, it's also a certified tool. It's so one of our members, so we have been continually working with them. So at this moment, like Andrew just said, we are not aware if more vendors are actually being involved. However, the resources are there. The, it's an open standard. And there's all the, the resources page that we just showed about how to use the, the standard. And if Mega or any other vendor can be interested, we are more than happy to work in collaboration and also to start uh, uh, working not only in the in the usage, of the standard, but also in the improvement and in the growing, because, for example, facing new versions of the standards or having, like Andrew just explaining, the possibility to, to migrate part of the model, not the whole model. There are things like we are in the future plans, and if we have more vendors involved, that it would be even better for us. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Sondra. This is the last question we have on the uh, QA, and I think this is just a, a more detailed question about um, involvement. This is from Frederick. He's asking, does the Open Group maintain and publish the contractual agreements uh, for tool vendors who sign for the implementation uh, of the conformant Archimate specification? Sonia? Okay, we have a, um, a conformance requirement and a whole process and program for being uh, Archimate certified for tools. So if you go into our site and you go into certification program and services and you go over argument certified tools, you will find all the processing there or the conformance requirement and all the different requisites that the different tool vendors should follow in order to be argument compliant. But there are different things in here. I mean, if you go into the process, if you are a tool vendor and you wanted to have your tool certified, you should follow the process and be compliant with the conformance requirement and then the tool will be automated certified. And having implemented the, the, the exchange file format is another step because then if you implemented it also, you will be able to share information between tools. At this moment, there is no a link between the two of them, even though like Andrew explained it in future plans, it's also to use the exchange file format to test some conformance for, for being a certified tool. That's great, Sonia. Thank you for that. Well, as I said, that's the last question on the QA. We're getting close to the end of our hour, so this is probably a good um, good moment to end today's uh, webinar. Sonia, do you have any final comments you'd like to make before I close today's event? Okay, first of all, thank you very much for all attendees for delivering this timing for us. I think like uh, like we explained at the beginning, uh, using uh, open standards and exchanging information, it's really delivering value to the industry as a whole. And uh, this group of people, has uh, they have made an outstanding job putting together all this and, and uh, delivering this standard that we have just published. So we wanted to invite uh, end users to submit their comments and suggestions for improvement to us. For example, the issue about security, it could be a good improvement in future versions. And also to invite again vendors to, to get involved with us in this effort. That's great. Well, thank you, Sonia. Thank you, panel. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, and I will now end today's event. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody.